it all depends on which veil, how you're looking at the world around you. And until you feel safe, you can't open your heart to other people. And you only feel safe when you've cultivated that part of yourself, which is not vulnerable, which isn't just your separateness. As long as you think you are only your separateness, you are doomed to fear and anxiety all the time. Gemma, Durga Devi here, sharing some thoughts today on experiencing triggers from past trauma and trying to gain some understanding of what happens when we experience a trigger from past trauma, why we go into kind of a shock. Um, part of it is like not feeling safe. It triggers those old emotions. But what I feel is also happening, being someone who's been on the spiritual path for a while, is that if you live with an open heart most of your life, and then all of a sudden something happens that triggers your closing of the heart, it kind of like freaks you out and you um, kind of lose yourself. That's a little bit of what I've experienced recently. So I'm sharing this with you today and I hope it's helpful. So this last year, it's been almost a year since my dad was diagnosed with stage four thyroid cancer of the genetic mutation type. Um, and it's put a lot of strain on everyone in the family, including myself. I've been there with him for most of his appointments and treatments, and we've become very close. And that's a positive thing that has happened through his diagnosis and his illness and his struggles and his surgeries and treatments. Um, but recently I had a, a trigger from a conversation with him that triggered trauma past trauma in my life and it was very um, it came as a, a big surprise a big shock that I had the response I had to something he said to me when I've been through a lot and I didn't understand what was happening and he was in the hospital when he spoke to me um, and it was just a couple days after he almost died this last time. And I had actually said my goodbyes to him. I had held his hand and he was in and out of consciousness. And I had said, you know, I love him and I understand if he's tired and he wants to go that he doesn't have to stay here for us. And I just wanted him to be at peace. And it was he was aware he opened his eyes i knew he heard me and then the next day we talked about it and we had a good conversation and it was the following day when he was feeling better that he spoke to me in a very um, hurtful way very demeaning way and i was extremely upset um, to the point where i just needed to leave the hospital and i wasn't sure what was happening and I'm sharing because I've been through trauma, like physical abuse trauma, sexual abuse trauma, um, and emotional abuse. And this wasn't that. It triggered very deeply in me unprocessed uh, emotions. And so it, it took me several days to have a conversation with my dad. Now, I'm sharing this because I've been a practitioner of yoga for 20 years, and I've worked through, I thought, a lot of stuff. Um, so this really took me by surprise. And I've been very strong with my dad and have been there when he's collapsed and, you know, through a lot of difficulty. And I've been through a lot of difficulty with Shiva Das and his health and, you know, his strokes and his heart attack and... So I've been through a lot and I've been able to really be there as Ram Das says, loving awareness. I am loving awareness and to really be that, not just to say you're that. So I know I have the capacity to be that. 
So this was really a shock to me that I, I lost it. I, um, I froze, I got angry, I cried, uh, and I needed to leave because I needed to really process what was going on. And I recognized it triggered old events in which I was treated in um, a demeaning way. I was controlled, I was abused. And so all these things came up for me. So I'm sharing this for several reasons because one, we can talk about, oh, just be love and be loving all the time, but <clears throat> we also have to know how to navigate difficult situations when we just don't have the capacity at that moment to be just loving awareness. So to be able to pause and to take appropriate action preferably without a meltdown, but sometimes a meltdown is needed for us to process if we're not quite ready to stand our ground and be steady and say what we need to say. So all of this has come up for me. And during this time when I couldn't talk to my dad and he was calling me several times a day to apologize and I couldn't talk, um, what I did was I started looking at my artwork and looking at my namesake Durga because I have a piece of art I've been working with for a while and I decided to create more items available online with Durga on them because I felt like she is what is needed and I am Durga Devi. And what does this mean? And so I started processing this whole thing. Why was I given this name? Which I've processed this before, but revisiting that. She, Durga, is a warrior who removes difficulty. Now the image I work with, she's riding a tiger and she's giving the blessing of peace, but she has eight arms and all these weapons. And so I started thinking about what are my weapons? Well, it is a weapon to be able to stand your ground and speak your truth. And I think this is where a lot of us, we freeze and then we push it down and we don't speak our truth. And so when I was ready after processing for three days, I did make the call and had the conversation and asked my dad to just listen. And I said it in a kind way, but I did speak my truth. And I did let him know that I knew that he was not that person that spoke those words to me. That that was ego, that that was fear, that that was, you know, not his essence. It wasn't loving awareness that was speaking. So I was trying to let him know, I see his truth, I see him. And as yogis, we often feel those that aren't practicing yoga can't understand, you know, I mean, real yoga. When we're practicing yoga, we're practicing being one with not just God, but with all, all beings to not see ourselves as separate and to see that we all have this divinity within us. We all have love. And to be able to come together and to not create separation. So I was trying skillfully to have that conversation with someone who doesn't practice yoga, who doesn't understand the whole philosophy without educating them on the philosophy, but just saying, I see you, I see your truth. I know this isn't your truth. I know you didn't mean to hurt me, but this is what happened and this is how it came across and this is what it triggered. And I'm sharing this because this helps to bring closure. So now I have 
the ability to move forward in my relationship with someone who triggered that trauma response in me. Whereas in the past, the people that have created the trauma in my life, I couldn't move forward with. I had to close the door because it wasn't safe for me to be with that person and in that situation. And so my weapon was to remove myself at that time. But now it is in speech. And this is part of the yogic process to one, know who we are. And that's not like the roles we play. That's going back to Ram Das. I am loving awareness. That is my truth. That is what doesn't change, even though it might get covered with fear or anger or frustration or desire or ego. But the truth is underneath all of that. And so when it becomes obscured to have the skill to use the weapons that Durga has, and I'm not saying to use a bow and arrow or a, an ax, but what do those represent? A bow and arrow to focus, you know, to stay true to what your truth is, to know the goal, to know your heart, right? So that's that focus, the acts to cut off the ego so that we're not retaliating from that place of you did this and I'm mad at you and all of that. So the artwork of Durga, I think is very powerful and I'm just beginning to explore how to utilize this. I did create a store on Redbubble and I do have artwork up there and I will share it in this talk in the link. Um, and I also created Durga without the eight arms and without all the weapons to encourage moms and dads to give their daughters a role model who is strong, a feminine role model, who is riding the tiger, who is living in the jungle, who can send blessings because she is confident. She has that empowerment. And so to empower other women and young women in stepping into who they really are and being able to speak up, to speak their truth. And I think this is where from what I have seen, this is where a lot of people get stuck with trauma, unprocessed because they haven't spoken their truth. Maybe they haven't had the difficult conversation with somebody. And if they're no longer in the relationship with the person that has created the trauma because it's not safe to be there, they haven't processed it themselves. And we all process things differently. You can definitely process through yoga, through asana, through breath work, through meditation, through journaling, through talking to someone who cares about you. All these ways are helpful. There's not one right way. I process in a lot of different ways and also through artwork and through music and through mantra. So a lot of different ways. I think one key question to ask yourself, if you are someone who has gone through trauma and maybe you're not sure if you've actually processed it or you want to process it, is who do you want to be? Because you don't want to stay in a victim role. You don't want to see yourself that way. You want to step into your power. Some of that power is heart power and some of it is speech power, Shuddha Chakra. But where does it come from? It comes from Manapura. You have to have a strong desire to transform. 
a strong desire to overcome the trauma, the difficulty, to alchemize the negative experience into something empowering for yourself because then we can empower others. Then we can bring others up. When we're practicing yoga, we are practicing stepping into the light of awareness that is beyond the ego. So rather than just telling somebody else that's your ego, we as yogis should help to bring them up so that they can see their truth. This is how change happens. Sometimes, yes, it's not the right decision to try to have a conversation with someone who has abused us and we need to just get out of that situation. Yes, that is true. You have to find a safe place to go and then you have to start the healing process. So this is kind of just a, a rambling of <laughs> where I'm at and the beginning of a hopefully a series of talks about processing trauma, abuse, um, and how to heal. And for relationships that we're currently in that might be triggering old trauma, how to have those difficult conversations. I feel pretty good about being able to have that conversation with my dad. And although our relationship did take, you know, some steps back, I feel that we can move forward and rebuild what we've built over this last year, which has been a very heart to heart um, relationship where there's not a lot of ego and there's more clarity and more real connection now than ever. And so this one event, it was, it was definitely a shocker, but I don't see it as being, um, long lasting and I can see that I will be able to return to a place of being loving awareness in the relationship and I think he can too. Jay Maha.